is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker. And on this show, we are looking for ways to work smarter. What does that mean? You know, we all say we want to work smarter, but we still get in our own way. So what it means is, and what we're going to talk about today is how to let go of the things that you shouldn't be doing. And I don't care if you were an entrepreneur, if you were a stay-at-home parent, or even within a large organization, and you might feel that you're at the bottom of the rung, so to speak. And I'm saying that with quotes for those of you who can't see me. There's always an opportunity to have somebody support you in things that you aren't the expert in. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And I have Brittany Brewer here with me today, and she is an accomplished figure in the freelancing industry. She's currently serving as a senior account executive at FreeUp. And with an impressive track record spanning nearly five years, her career has encompassed a diverse range of roles from the freelance sector to client support to extending support to ancillary businesses. And, you know, without further ado, let's invite Brittany to share her expertise to help us to see how we can make our lives easier by delegating the things that we shouldn't really be doing. (laughs) Brittany, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Penny. I'm so happy to be here. It's great to have you here because it's so important to have valuable insight and resources to help us to get out of our own way. And I think that's our goal needs to be today. What do you think keeps people from making that plunge to delegate things to someone else? Yeah, that's a great question. Something that we like to say is analysis paralysis. It's just the idea of getting started, I think sometimes can be, it can just be such a hindrance for people. You know, they know that they have things that they need to get off their plate, but even figuring out how to delegate them or even identifying what it is that's kind of bogging them down and making them want to pull their hair out, just getting those things said out loud or written down, that's the biggest struggle. And that's where a lot of people will have a failure to launch, so to speak, just from the very beginning because they don't really know how to get the ball rolling. So do you have any suggestions on how people can do that? What's the first thing that they can do so that they can see what they have that they could delegate or, you know, like you said, get that ball rolling? Yeah, for sure. So I myself, I've been in the industry for so long. I've done I've worn many hats. So I've been a freelancer in the industry. And then now what I do is I work for free up directly. So I have a unique perspective on it. I know from a freelancer side of things, like what needs to be told to you in order to get you going. And then from the client's perspective, I know their struggles. I can hear their struggles. I see the same things day in and day out. And one of the biggest things to just kind of get started is being really grassroots about it. Pick up a pen and paper and just start writing down the things that are time sucks for you. Start writing down the things that are menial, that are just driving you crazy, that you wish that you never had to look at again. And just kind of getting those things down, it's a great first step because your mind, with especially when you're trying to scale, is oftentimes putting the course You can see the big picture, you know what your goal is, you see where you want to be, but just those little things, those building blocks, that's where you have to start. And understanding where to begin is going to be the first step. Absolutely. You know, I I would say, from my perspective, I would say take the low value items, the things that don't really add a lot of value, but also take a lot of time. Anything that takes a lot of time, that could be a good thing so that you can free up space. And what creates stress for you? right? Those are things that would be great to let go of as well. So I kind of like to also have somebody kind of write out all the things that they do like Mm -hmm. in a week and then kind of circle those things, right? That they're like, well, I wish I wasn't doing that. (laughs) 
Exactly. Yeah. I think that that's such a good first place to start because you need to do these things. Like no matter what it is, if you're doing something as simple as just answering emails, it's such a simple thing. It's not really a big picture item, but it has to be done. So Mm -hmm. it's not to say that those tasks don't have value to your business because of course they do. But when you're trying to focus on big picture stuff and those things are just like eating up hours of your day, it doesn't really give you enough time to focus on growth and scaling. So those little menial tasks, those are great places to get started. Yeah. And having somebody to do that or something else for you, right? That's a great filter is your assistant or person who's supporting you in your email yeah. as an example would say and be instructed that these are the things that to, we can let through the filter and these other things you can respond or you can put them in my calendar and schedule them for next week if that's important or just handle it. Right. So uh, oh, for sure, having those filters in place to protect yourself from those non-important or false urgencies or things like that is so critical. Yeah, definitely. And I think like a lot of people get when it comes to especially like working with a freelancer or bringing somebody on, they kind of think that it's a bigger deal than it is. I don't want to make it sound like having somebody work for you is a trivial thing, but it really isn't this grandiose process. You know, you identify that you need some help. And these freelancers, they work with other clients in the past, so they can kind of almost bring something to the table for you. A lot of these people are project managers. They might be able to help you identify where you need help in areas that you never even thought of, you know, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you're Whether you're a working parent trying to do an online business or something like that, your brain is going a million miles a minute. Sometimes having somebody else to look at your big picture and kind of take away the things that are giving you more stress and offer you some insight is all you really need to kind of get started. Absolutely. And I I think something you said is important, like we make it a bigger deal. I mean, the beautiful thing is, is that when you go through like a freelancing agency, you're not hiring somebody full time. You're not having to do all the paperwork and the payroll and all of that. So it really is kind of just easy. And you can also test someone out, right? You can work with somebody and just see the difference. And I know for myself, it's made a huge difference. Whenever I hold back from bringing somebody on to support me, I'm always, once I do it, I'm always like, what took me so long? Like, exactly. so <laughs> So it is easier than one thinks. You just have to pick up the phone. And organizations like yours, you vet people, you know, That's so that right. I don't have to. So I can just maybe interview two people instead of interviewing 15 people, right? And that yeah. makes a big difference too. Yeah, for sure. I think in the past, people when they're building a business or, you know, just kind of getting started, they, again, putting the cart before the horse, they're thinking, oh, well, do I have to have an employee identification number? Do I have to have a W-2 employee vacation time? How much do I pay them? How much do I do here? When you're working with a freelancer, like you said, that's the beauty of it. There's so much more flexibility. You can hop on a call with somebody from FreeUp or you can submit a job request on your own. It's all automated now. You can see things so clearly and kind of see what your options are before you jump in and make that big commitment. So I think that with FreeUp specifically, it kind of takes a little of that anxiety away. And a lot of the guesswork, you can talk to somebody on the phone at FreeUp. We have account managing services. So if you're confused about something or maybe don't even know where to start at all, you can actually kind of spitball ideas off of someone and and get an idea about where to begin versus just going at it alone. Yeah, fantastic. You yeah. mentioned that you used to be, you know, the person who was taking on other people's delegations and whatnot. Yeah. What are some tips that people can think about ahead of time? Like, okay, I'm ready to do it. I've got my list. I know what I want to delegate. What are some tips on those key things to be able to communicate to your assistant? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's something that we focus on a lot for our clients. Number one thing is try to be as transparent as possible. You know, if there are especially transparent when you're creating like a job request or or just getting matched with someone, if there are processes that you don't have laid out, be honest about that because that's going to be something that you need to do right from the beginning. If you don't have a standard operating procedure for how you like a certain task to be done, be honest with that with your freelancer. Let them know, hey, this is something I'm still trying to build out. We can work through this together or take some time to build it out before you bring on your freelancer. Another thing too is just get your communication channels down immediately. Whatever works best for you, let the person that you're working with know upfront. Like for example, some people 
really like to use Zoom for once a week meetings. Other people are more comfortable with Google Meet. Some people just like to do communication old school via email, whatever your communication channel is that works best for you. And if you already have a team in place and you're bringing someone on, whatever channels you're currently using, let the freelancer know and make sure that they understand how you like things to be done. Because one of the biggest issues that can happen when working with someone who's remote and not you know, in office or working with you side by side every day is lost communication. Yeah, or unclear communication, right? That's also exactly can be a big issue. So, and I would say, tell me if you agree with this. So it's getting those communication channels clear, but it's also getting the tools that you're going to use together clear. 100%. Um, I find that to be really useful so that like, if you're going to use Asana or some kind of a project management tool that's, or Trello or something that's going to track the tasks, like how yeah. are you going to keep track of the work that is is being done and, and also make it easier for yourself to put something in the queue, right? Sure. So that you don't have to be on Zoom or connecting physically in order to, to put something new into the queue. Yeah, definitely. Things like Asana and Trello, a lot of people, again, they get kind of scared. They're like, all I know right now is that I need product listing done and I'm really overwhelmed with it. And they don't know about tools like Trello and Asana. What's really cool about working with a freelancer, specifically a free up freelancer, is that most all of the virtual assistants on the platform have experience with a multitude of time management and product management tools. So if you're looking for somebody to just kind of take over the process or build out a process for you, because again, you don't know where to start, a lot of the freelancers can offer that support and say, hey, I've used Asana before. I know you don't know what it is, but let me show you. This is going to be great. It'll be very helpful for us to keep everything in clear line and keep the project moving forward. And that helps a lot of our clients out having that expertise coming in. What's the average number of hours that let's say somebody needs support? Like, is there a minimum where I say, oh, you know, I really only need like two or three hours a week would really help me to yeah. get some things organized, but that's probably not enough to hire somebody. What's the standard and how does that work? Yeah. So that's another question. A lot of people ask, there's other hiring platforms out there that might have a minimum, like you have to hire 10 hours a week, but we really try to be more flexible with it. You know, like if we want to make sure that if you're a growing business, we're not putting you into a box where you have to have that. We have no hourly minimum. So if you only needed somebody one hour, one day a week, that would be completely fine. But as far as like the average goes, it really just depends on where the person's at in their business. You know, we have people who hire virtual assistants for 40 hours a week and they've been working with them for the past two or three years. And then we have people who, again, only need somebody one or two hours a week. And that's totally fine. Just depends on where you're at with your business. Yeah, totally. I wanted to, in, the, in my introduction, I talked about even people who work in, you know, it might be an assistant in a larger organization. Let's say they're given the task where they have to put together a presentation and they're not good with PowerPoint. Like, why not hire somebody to make your life easier, which might be able to do that in an hour or two. And then you have a basis, you know, it's totally worth whatever it is, 10, 20, 30 bucks, yeah. right? To And and people are like, oh, no, you know, that's, I, I couldn't do that. Why not? Exactly. Yeah, why not? I mean, there are so many things, like even myself, I have a freelancer that helps me on a daily basis with those things like Excel. Everybody knows how to use Excel, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating when you're trying to do formulas and all that good stuff. So having somebody to just come in and do that and the amount of work that I can get done doing high level stuff compared to what I would be doing if I was spending the time to do all of that spreadsheet stuff that somebody else can do it in 20 minutes. It's a right. no brainer. Totally. Totally. So interesting, right? As a, as in this business that you're in, how would you define productivity and why? Well, I think there's a couple different ways, but the, obviously the number one way to identify productivity is going to be for our business is going to be, is this revenue generating? Like is the time that we're putting into this bringing money or bringing growth back into the business? That's what we would tell our clients to look for and to develop metrics for that, to make sure that whatever you're working on is actually conducive to the growth of your business. It's easy to see that when you're working with a freelancer, you know, everything is tracked within the dashboard on FreeUp. So it's really easy for clients to kind of see, okay, I've been working with Jane for three months now, and I can very clearly see how many hours Jane's worked and the amount that I've spent. And I can also take a look at how much my business has grown since I've been working with Jane. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, 
the business is growing, the client is less stressed out, and it's such an easy way for them to gain back time an affordable cost. So it's a great way for them to measure productivity on that side. Yeah, absolutely. So what haven't I asked you yet about the freelancing world that you think is important for the listeners to to know? I mean, obviously the podcast here is making sure that you're being useful with your time. The biggest thing that a lot of people on the platform when they come in that they aren't maybe really prepared for is taking the time up front to mm. further vet the freelancer. We take the hard part out and we do the pre-vetting. We're going to do pr- preliminary identity verification, fraud checks. We have them do like a, a terms of service test and best practices test. But taking the time when you're bringing someone on in the beginning to do an interview and to make sure that culturally they're a good fit for you ends up saving you time down the long run. Obviously, working with a freelancer, working with anybody who can take anything off your plate, that's going to free up your time. But you got to spend a little bit of time up front to make sure that you're not repeating yourself down the line and you're not having a lot of turnover with the freelancers. Finding out if the person that you are interested in works with you and not just on paper is super important. Yeah, absolutely. I found that myself. And I like to, what I like to do when I'm hiring somebody new is come Mm -hmm. up with a small project. Oh yeah. That's that's not going to, because there's only so much you can get from an interview that sometimes it's in the working together that you find out what somebody's style is really like and whether they can work with your style. So I like to do that. I like to come up with like a, a little project for maybe two or three hours and just sort of have, and then debrief it, right? How did this go for you? What was missing? How could we do this differently? And likewise, and then you, you know, then you start to understand how to best work together by by having sort of a defined first project. Oh, for sure. I actually, my dad is a client of FreeUp as well. And he's really old school, but I told him, okay, let's just take it one step at a time. Tell me exactly what you need. All he needed was somebody to come in and use Canva and create an ad for him, essentially. And when I visited over the holidays, watching him try to do it on his own, it was like, okay. I can get you somebody to do this. Just trust me. So we got him a freelancer for just two hours, simple kind of test project. And he was hooked from there. Like, why didn't you tell me I could do this sooner? Why didn't you tell me how easy it was? Just having a small project up front so you can see how easy it is and also kind of see how the freelancers communicate and how things like that would go. It's a good indicator of whether or not that person is going to be uh, a good fit for your project moving forward. Yeah, totally. So where can people find out more information about you and FreeUp? Yeah, so anybody can head over to freeuppod.com and we've got a link there if anybody wants to book a call with an account manager. But more importantly for your listeners, they can get $50 in credits to get started. So that's up to 10 hours of free work. So again, it's freeuppod.com. And there's some other good resources there like our um, getting started guide and a scope of work template. Lots of good stuff there. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Penny. It was great to be here. And thank you all for being here and listening. And maybe we just chipped away at some of the fear or the anxiety or the doubt that you might have about helping yourself to help yourself, which is to hire somebody to be able to delegate things to. So in sharing at this at this final stage of our show, I, I just want to share one additional tip to you all in the audience is one of the things I love to do in my morning routine is to delegate. Everybody talks about get your work out in, get your head straight. And I agree with all of that. And the first thing I like to do is to delegate because when I delegate something in the morning, I'm already productive. I've already multiplied my time during the day and my effectiveness because I was able to give something out and I'm either going to get it back later in the day or the next day, but I know that my team is working for me. So I love that. So try it, go ahead and create yourself, you know, take that first step. If you're listening and you get it, take that first step and identify a small project that you could do that you could take off your hands that would free you up from from some stress to give you back some time to work on things that are more strategic or be with your family or whatever, whatever those things might be and see how it changes everything and how it frees you up. And that's why it's called Free Up, the organization that we're talking to. (laughs) So again, thank you all for being here. My name is Penny Zanker and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. 
Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time. Oh, 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 o